Greetings astronomy students and fellow astronomy enthusiasts. This is Zach Stockbridge and in this video I'm going to give you a tour and tutorial of Sky Safari, specifically the newest version, Sky Safari 7. This is a great tool. I've been using past versions of Sky Safari in both my teaching and my personal astronomy observing for a number of years. It's just got a lot of capabilities and a lot of tools and I hope this tutorial is helpful for you. Before we dive in, I'm going to let you know that I'm doing my first giveaway here on this channel. I'll be giving away one copy of Sky Safari 7 Pro, a $40 value, specifically for iOS. Uh, the Android version simply is not available yet as of the date of this recording. So stay tuned until the end of the video for details on how to enter for a chance to win. With that said, we've got a lot of ground to cover in Sky Safari. So let me slide off to the side and let's dig in. Here we are on the main screen of Sky Safari and we're gonna begin our tour here before we move down to the different menu options that you see along the bottom. In a number of ways, the view is still the same as what it's been in the past, but things are a little bit different in their placement. Now let's go ahead and the first thing to start with is you see the eye next to the sun. That's information because I have the sun selected. If you tap the eye, then what's going to happen is the information page for the sun is going to pop up. Now there are actually two different pages here. This is your defaults page that just has a little bit of basic information about sunrise, sunset, transit, and the other info you see there, as well as a written description. But if you swipe to the right, you'll see a lot more detailed information about all kinds of things. Coordinates, much more detailed than what was on the previous screen. Astronomy students, those of you that are in my class, this is the page that we're going to use the most, just so you know. Now, one of the other new features in Sky Safari 7 is the press and hold feature. It used to be that if you wanted to get to the info page, it took a little bit of work, but now they have an option where if you press and hold on a target, a bunch of different icons come up, and these are basically going to help you do different things quickly without having to access through the traditional menu along the bottom. Real quickly, the first icon here, the two arrows, is to center the object on your screen. So whatever it is, it'll move to the center. See, I was already fairly close there. If we bring that back up, the spaceship icon is for if you want to orbit the object. We're going to do that real quick. So what that'll do is that will take you off of Earth's surface and transport you to some point in space where you are orbiting the object that you had selected. Now, to get back to the Earth's surface, we're going to use the Earth-looking icon down here. If you tap that, it'll return to the previous view. This little thing that looks like a couple of different pages, this is for if you're going to add the objects to an observing list that you're hoping to go through. The eyeball looking icon is if you are really good about documenting your observations and you want to record an observation and say, hey, this is the object I looked at and these are the times, the dates, the equipment, make some notes. It gives you all of that kind of stuff in here. Going on, if you want to take a look at previous observations, the single page here will bring up a list of previous observations. If you want to measure the angular distance between two objects, that's what the ruler is for. Let me go ahead and show you how that goes. So if we were going to measure from the sun to any particular star, you simply tap on it and it'll give you the angular distance from the sun as well as what the physical distance is. So we know that this star is 30 degrees away in the sky, but it's 97 light years deep into our screen. And then the final icon on the quick menu here is for the audio. If you wanted to play an audio description, only a few other things up here on the, the main screen. You have your plus and your minus arrows down here for if you want to zoom in without having to do the pinch and hold thing. Up here in the right, this little diamondy looking thing is actually a compass needle. 
If you tap that, you're going to turn the phone into compass mode. So wherever you move and point your phone, that's what piece of sky you're looking at. If you want to do augmented reality where the camera on your phone talks to Sky Safari and fills in the view down here along your horizon. But I do have another YouTube video on my channel that explains how to use the augmented reality. All right, we're gonna turn off compass mode with, by going with the X there. Those are the main features on the main screen. Down here along the bottom, you'll see a number of different things on the menu. This is actually slightly deceptive because there are more options on the menu than what you see here. If you turn your phone sideways into landscape mode, you'll see that there are more options further off to the right that you can't really access when you're on the main screen here. You can't scroll to the side like you used to be able to do. If you want to see what's going on in the sky tonight, you can simply do that and it'll tell you what's going on with the sun, the moon, the planets, a number of deep sky objects. Search is a feature that you will use quite a bit. You can enter your search by a specific name or if you have a specific type of object that you want to observe. So for example, the most common is going to be the sun and the planets. Simply open it up and it gives you all of the different planets, including some dwarf planets down there at the bottom. If you want information on any particular object here, like we're going to go ahead and do Mars, simply select that and it takes us to the information page that has everything that we need for Mars. Going back to the main screen, time is also a feature that you're going to use a lot. In the upper left hand corner, you'll see that a time displayed. This is whatever time the planetarium is set for, Sky Safari is set for, not necessarily the actual time on the clock. To adjust your time, the easiest way to do it is to tap the time icon down here at the bottom. See where this number is underlined? That means that if we use the forward or backward arrows, we will be jumping forward or backward in one minute increments. So the, the arrow here just has me moving one at a time. If I want to do a full animation and kind of fast forward, I hit what looks like the play button and there it goes. Tap it again to stop. You can also work this in reverse. If for whatever reason you need to jump forward by a different time increment, so let's say I actually want to go by more minutes, simply tap over here and this window will appear and you can type in the exact number of minutes that you want to jump forward with each tap on the screen. To move forward in some number of hours or days or months or years, all you have to do is tap on that particular part of the date and you can see that now we're going to move by a month, a day, or even a year at a time. You're going to use this a lot, but if at any point you need to return to your current time, you want to know what's happening right now in the sky, simply hit now and it'll do that. See how the icon is the same here and here? Two different places to access the same thing. So this is going to give you the object info for whatever object you have selected. Right now it's Mars, but let's say I want to tap on Saturn and select it. We go to object info and there again we have everything for Saturn. Going sideways into landscape mode, let's look at a couple of other options. The night vision is very, very handy for when you're outside and you're trying to do some stargazing and you don't want your phone ruining your night vision. Simply tap that to switch everything over to red to preserve your night vision. Selection, also a very helpful tool. It's going to take whatever object you have selected so for example, currently that's Saturn, and it's going to give you a bunch of options. Again, we can hop over to the info page, we can center the object, you can display some graphs, orbit, measure. These are all the same things that were on the quick menu for if we simply tapped and held on the object. Settings is a place that we will spend 
a lot of time if you're in the astronomy course. We're going to go through this in a lot more detail in a moment. Observe is one that comes in quite handy. There's something hidden here that was not in previous versions of Sky Safari, and that's your events page. It allows you to specify a set of dates, and it tells you basically what are some different things that are happening in the sky between your starting and your end date. So for example, there's a shadow transit of Io. If you want to see what that looks like, simply tap on it on your screen and it jumps to a zoomed in quick version of what's going on here and you can animate it and there you can see both Io and Europa moving across and not only do you see the planet, the moons, but we also see their shadows being cast on the planet. If you want to change the increment, again you can do that over here. Also in the observe section, the planner is what used to be known as an advanced search. And here I'm going to switch back into upright mode. If you want to search for specific kinds of objects, you simply select them here and just choose any ones that apply. And then you can choose where you're observing from. If you're curious about what things would look like from a different point on the globe, you can plug that in. If it's visible tonight, and then there are all kinds of different restrictions and ways to get really specific about I'm looking at this part of the sky or I want to look in oops, see you got lots of options in the show more section or I want to look in this catalog or I want to look only in this specific constellation gives you all of those options here in the observing planner all right back to landscape that's all we're going to do in the observe category I have other videos for how to do telescope displays and enter your equipment so you can preview what something would look like through your telescope and eyepiece or telescope and camera or whatever accessories you have. Let's go back to that settings and we're going to try and move through this as quick as we can. But there's a lot of important stuff here in settings. So I'm going back over to upright mode. Again, you can adjust the current date and time, changing your location. As far as I know, this is the only place to change your location in Sky Safari, and we're going to do this a lot. You can enter specific coordinates, or you can choose your location from a list, and you know just select whatever country, and then pick your city. Lots of good stuff in there. All right, coordinates, for the most part, Coordinates are not something you need to worry about too much, especially if you're in the astronomy course. Change your format. So instead of military style time, if you want to go AM, PM, or if you want to change how your date is displayed or how your coordinates are displayed, you can do that here in formats. Appearance and behavior is a place that you probably do want to spend a lot of time because this is where you can really customize your display. So for example, you heard those different sound effects earlier. Well, if you don't like that, you can just turn the sound effects off. If you want to make the compass so that it doesn't come on automatically, turn that off. Now, some of these options in here, you'll want to kind of change things to taste. So up here on your screen, see how we have just current location hanging out in the middle of the screen. Same with this box of coordinates that generally aren't too helpful. And then you've got your date kind of repeated over here. If you want to clear that stuff out so that it is not cluttering your screen as much, you do that here from appearance and behavior. So I want to turn off the coordinates in view. I want to remove that location and date. I do want the zoom buttons. I do want the compass. Let's get that on-screen info button kind of out of the way. And there are other things that you can do here as well, but this is really an ideal group of settings. As you move down through the rest of these, a lot of these other ones come down to personal preference. You can turn on and off notifications. You can change your horizon and sky. This is one that I do recommend. Uh, a lot of people like the panoramic image, but if you're in the astronomy class, I would encourage you to go with the translucent area. 
because what that does is it gives you a line that shows where the horizon is, but down below in this slightly grayed out area, you can still see what's below the horizon. So you'll know if something has just set, or if we scroll back over to the east, you'll be able to see what things are rising and may be visible soon. Again, everything is kind of personal preference, except that if you're in the astronomy class, I'll give you some specific instructions about turning on coordinate grids of different kinds, but your main control up here is either on or off for whatever is happening down below. So for example, there I've turned on one of the coordinate grids. The last thing that I want to put in this video is we're going to go to settings and there is a place, I believe it's in appearance and behavior, where you can customize your menus. So we're going to configure the toolbar right here. And what this allows you to do is this allows you to change what is going to be visible in your upright screen or in your horizontal screen. And also, if you drag it, you can change the order that the different options, the different tools appear on your toolbar. Oh, that was a whirlwind tour, Sky Safari. I know I threw a lot at you, and I know we had to move quickly, but I do hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. There are some other tutorials on specific features in Sky Safari, and they behave the same way in version 7 as they do in version 6, even if they're located in different places. So check out my YouTube channel for more of those features. As I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm doing my first giveaway here on this channel. We're doing one free copy of Sky Safari 7 Pro, normally a $40 value, specifically the iOS version of the app, because as of this date, the Android version of Sky Safari 7 hasn't been released yet. Also, unfortunately, this giveaway is only for new subscribers here in the United States, not because I want it that way, but because the access codes that I have will only work here through the iOS App Store in the United States. My apologies to all you international viewers. There was just no way that I could get an access code that would be able to work for everybody. Entering for a chance to win is very simple. Two quick steps. Subscribe to this channel and leave a comment on this video before the full moon of April 2022. I'm going to leave you to look up the exact date, but before the April 2022 full moon, subscribe and leave a comment below. The comment is the only way that I am able to contact the winner. The day after the full moon, I will do a random drawing of new subscribers, and actually anyone who subscribed back as far as January 1st, as long as you leave a comment so I'm able to contact you if you win. All of you guys are eligible. Quick disclaimer, this giveaway is sponsored by Sky Safari. They provided the access code for version 7 Pro, but we have not consulted, they have not made any requests in terms of the content of this video. Thank you guys for joining me. Again, I hope this tutorial was helpful, and I'll see you next time.